speech synthesis. Uh, this is like a master's or graduate level topic. So this is really big. Uh, make that thing talk. Now, if you're paying attention, I want you to do me a favor and everybody close your eyes for a, for a second. I want to play you something uh, just to demonstrate how much your eyes are cued into your ears and vice versa. So, if you can do, do me a favor, close your eyes. And if you're not paying attention, don't worry about it. Uh, ignore what the narrator is saying, all right? Like yes. 
Uh, it's really hard to push the gain on this sort of synthesis up too high. Uh, and you want it to be really narrow because when you're talking about synthesis for, for speech, like our ears are really specific. This is the sort of thing that influences accent, dialect. So if you want to be really clear, you have to make sure you, you boost that specific frequency. Um, so they all have really narrow here. And then we have E, E, uh, So that's that's that vowels. These are the basic building blocks of of words that you can synthesize easily. Um, now I know like the things like this is a ginseng. It's an Arduino shield. Uh, various other synthesizers, such as the Clack Speech Synthesizer, you should Google that if you're interested, it's really awesome. Um, they use two whole filters. Uh, Max doesn't let me really distinguish that very well, so I didn't worry about it. Consonants are a little trickier. Um, they're really hard to produce. There was a there was a lot of papers being written about this about ten years ago, just because it's it's and it's still hard to reproduce well. Uh, there are two types of consonants for the most part. There's voice consonants like b. Buzz voice consonant has a fundamental frequency. Uh, v v has a frequency. But if you say F, that doesn't have a fundamental frequency, it's just noise. So that's the difference between voiced and unvoiced consonants when you're doing this sort of thing. Uh, and the best way to reproduce these are through using noise and uh, you use filters to sweep to get some of them like wah, wah. Your, your lips are basically a filter that's sweeping up uh, the frequencies. Uh, if you look here, Uh, if you look here, this is just the word sun, and you see here there's just a hiss here for S, and then uh, a more tuned sort of signal here for, for U for the vowel, and then N is kind of like closing off part of the signal from the U. generator here and just to demonstrate B is done by taking this filter here and it's actually just cutting off things so you don't hear the fundamental as much because when you talk you actually don't hear the fundamental frequency as much unless you're singing uh, so this is this this filter will get swept up and you're hearing the lowest the lower frequency and a bit, and uh, it's a little tricky to figure out the amount of noise to put into a T, unfortunately. So. And bet. Oh, boot is fine. Then there's kind of this third category that are semi-vowels like R and L uh, in English, and we think of them as consonants, but they don't sound like consonants when you analyze them. This is just R, and then L. Um, and this this sort of thing can be implemented on any platform. Uh, I am going to spend the summer experimenting with Arduinos. Uh, Arduino has a ginseng shield, which 
has basically so you don't have to learn how to get all get into programming the filters and everything, which is what I need to demonstrate it. Uh, but one of my friends from his senior thesis at Berkeley did in fact program an Arduino note to sound just like the ginseng. He didn't need the extra shield. He just got in, coded all the filters himself. Uh, I did a connect project instead. <laughs>
like the more filters you have lined up, it's, it's the only problem you have to run into is attenuating everything so down, so far down that the ener there's just not enough energy to push it. Like um, the reason I, I set my patch up this this way is because if if I have all these these sliders here, these are different settings for each vowel because different amounts of energy were leaking through and they were all coming through at different volumes, which is what I meant when I said I normalized the patch. Uh, because if you put too many filters in, then you don't hear things as well. Also, it has to do with uh, the harmonics of the fundamental. Well, the, just the, a fundamental square wave will have energy uh, at the, the multiples of, of the, the fundamental. Like, the 100 square wave has uh, 100 here, means that it has components at 200, 300, 400, and so on. So is that why you use the square wave, so that you got all that? Yeah, because you've got all this energy up there that you can filter, and that's that's why our voices work that way. If you use the sine wave, you filter out everything above 100, and you've got nothing, because that's just the basic. Uh, so um, this is actually also how singing works. Uh, people who are professional singers in like operas and have to sing over an orchestra without amplification have actually trained their voice to peak at higher frequencies than the orchestra peaks, so you can hear them. Uh, and I don't know the details of how they train that. That's I, I'd really like to do research into that because um, I, I sing a little bit, not a professional, but it would be nice to figure out how to how to be heard better. Um, anything else? Uh, what is where we're going to say the saw wave? Um, you can do a saw wave, but because a square wave has has multiples, has harmonics in. All of the all of the harmonics, a sawtooth wave only has even ones. I always get the opposite. Even enough. Square wave is only odd. Thank you. Um, so you could use a sawtooth. I just can tell you it doesn't sound as good. Like I can I can bang one in here if you want to see it.
square waves. Um, actually, what's really fun is to get a good loop, like a good sample, and loop it through. And then you can also have all sorts of weird things. I did I did a project involving a bagpipe sample loop through a synthesizer. Uh, so yeah. Any anything else? Mm -hmm. Sorry, maybe this was asked when I was downstairs, but uh, is there any place you can get a good like phonetic dictionary for English? If if you find one, please let me know. Um, I the resources I have here. Uh, What's the folder? These, these are the best resources I have found, uh, including Wikipedia. The problem is that there are several different ways of notating phonetics and phonemes, uh, because they're trying to make it, of course, like language neutral, not just based on English. And it's hard to get straight what each one sounds like versus what it's notated, because the symbols often overlap. So I've been looking for a really good, concise, Here's the symbol, here's what it sounds like, or at least this is the word it goes with, and I have yet to find a really good one that I could just bang reference and know what I'm doing. Yeah, uh, I've found uh, several several textbooks, at least samples from several textbooks that look really in ec excellent, and they're all between $150 and $200, and those are the ebook versions, so I have not invested in one yet. Uh, maybe not completely related, but I mean, it's, it's a suggestion. Um, how is this then compared to more of the old school system where you where you work off the noise channel and just play with the volume to get speech out of it? Um, you can you can do this with noise. It's it's going to sound interesting uh, because noise has all of the frequencies. It, it's just it's a uh, I haven't I haven't done a lot with the old the old hardware that's not music. I've used noise channel for like drum drum sounds, but not for speech. Uh, and so I imagine what happens is you're going to get a lot of extra hiss unless you really low yeah, pass filter all the high. Really a lot of hissing clips in there, yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, that, that's actually so now I've got this idea for something that's really subtle. You put it in the the noise channel, it's all in the background and creepy. <laughs> Yeah, and I guess the other thing that people do when they're on the old school platforms, they make sure you always have subtitles. So suddenly, yeah, even yeah, though it doesn't really sound right, suddenly it's still all. That's what I wanted to demonstrate. Like, you put a caption up there, and they're like, oh, of course that's what I'm hearing. Why wouldn't that be what I'm hearing? Any, anything else? Okay, great. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening.